Well, good morning, everybody, again, and welcome to the morning show. I'm your host, Mark Prevo, and this is the Schooner Morning Show on a Tuesday morning in January, right here at Schooner Estates in Auburn, Maine. With me today, I have the wife of Del Hayes, who was here a couple weeks ago. And her name is Betty Elizabeth, properly, right? Elizabeth is Betty. You like Betty better? That's correct. Betty Hayes. Anything but Liza. <laughs> <laughs> now, Liza Minnelli was very fav I famous. I know it, but my mother was dead set against Liza or uh, anything like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, tell us where you were born, Betty. Let's was, start at the beginning. I was born in the little town of Greenwood, and it was just below Greenwood City. And the doctor didn't get there in time. Back then, we did have a telephone for a while. And uh, the doctor didn't get there in time. My father had to deliver me. And he never got over it because he was billed just the same. He had to pay the bill, pay the doctor. And he thought that was not right. But he protested, and it didn't do him any good. He had to pay. Well, the doctor must have stepped in and helped when he got there. Well, once he got there, but it was long after the... Oh and my goodness. So he, your father delivered you. That's right. He's he he the doctor started and he said, Oh well, it's her first baby and they're always slow. So he stopped at the neighbors for a cup of coffee and he never arrived till after well after the event. That is unbelievable. <laughs> I think that is just incredible. That's one of the best stories I've heard yet. I've I've uh, I'm a hundred percent Finn. My mother was Finnish and my father was born in Finland. He had to get naturalization papers when he came to this country. And there aren't very many of us that are 100% thin anymore. Wow. And, and soon there won't be any left. My sisters and I, and I have a cousin that is 100% thin. But there's few of us, few and far between. Well, you know, that explains a lot. Because Dell always told me you have to have the last word, so That's you have to finish. That's right. I <laughs> Get it? Finish the conversation. Finish. Uh, anyway, okay, so uh, you were born in Greenwood, That's and we right. know your husband was as well. But he, he lived across, over the mountain. We had a mountain between us, Noyce Mountain, and I never, never met him until I was in high school. Isn't that something? He, my grandfather were, was a grandfather to him. He called him Grandpa, but... He, and they lived at the end of the road where the Hazes lived. Yeah. My grandpa, we went to sauna there every Saturday. They had, my grandfather had a sauna and he started up the fire and got the rocks all hot before we got there. Wow. And, uh, but I'd see these boys out playing in the yard, but I didn't think anything of it. I didn't care for boys then. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's something. So, uh. So you met Dell in high school, and then where, what happened after that? Well, we actually, I met him in grammar school. I, my, the small school I went to was one-room school, and I skipped two grades. And I went up to the, what they called the Greenwood City School, where Dell went, in the, my eighth grade. And the teacher there was Calista Morgan, and everyone, every one of her pupils up to then had been a relative of hers. But when, I, when we closed the Richardson Hollow School, why, when we went up there, then she had students that weren't relatives of hers. Yes, I met Dell there on the playground. I remember what blue eyes he had. <laughs> I don't think much more about it. But then I went to Norway High School one year and uh, worked my board. And the next year, why, w person that I called Grammy Cole, though she wasn't really my grandmother, she... Uh, took me in and kept me and the Hayes boys had the his elder brother had a old model something a Ford something that he drove and they stopped and got me every day and I went to West Paris High School and graduated from there isn't that something my grandmother on my mother's side died of the flu in 1918 no kidding oh, the, yes. the last pandemic yeah yeah she did she died of it and my family didn't have much to do with hospitals since then because they took her away to the hospital and she died and they always blamed the hospital. Right, exactly. But yeah. it wasn't, I mean, it would have happened anyway. Wow, wow, that's something. So 
Uh, now, I know you had kind of a career. What did, what did you do after school? What did you... Well... You went on to learn more about something, or...? I did a lot of things. I worked in Penley's Mill and made clothespins, and my first job was in the corn shop. Father got it for me, and I was a timekeeper, and the man that ran the corn shop said he couldn't stand girls who giggled. And the first time I giggled, I'd be, I'd be fired. So oh. I was a great giggler, so I was as sober as could be. I never smiled even in that job. I was scared to death. Can you imagine that uh, today that would never fly? That and it, I made 18 cents an hour, too. 18 cents an hour. <laughs> Boy, that was that was gravy to me today as the minimum wage in maine as of january 1st is twelve dollars and fifteen cents i know so that's eleven dollars and sixty eight cents more than you than you uh but everything costs a lot more now too yeah that's true that's true what was the loaf of bread back then i don't know mother made all the bread we never bought anything homemade we, bread we, homemade. we were self-sufficient in every respect, we never, in the war, we except father missed tires and gasoline and so forth, but my mother never learned to drive. One thing that did happen, Dell taught me to drive before we were married. I recommend that highly. You don't get hollered at by your father or your <laughs> husband. You, you get, you learn. Right, from learn, somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Dell taught me to drive and I learned to drive from him. Wow. Father had very little patience and so he would have been, uh, well, he would have been outraged most of the time. <laughs> he would have been a hard teacher. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But back then you said uh, you were very self-sufficient. So we made were, your own bread, probably we, had chickens, grew the eggs, the, right, we had slaughtered the beef. Had chicken, raised a pig every year and to have the lard and the, and the pork. And yeah, we had the beef. If, if. Father didn't trade something for a beef high side. Why, we'd butch, he'd butcher one himself. Oh, we had we and we made maple syrup, so we had maple sugar and maple syrup for sweetening. And mother was very ingenious, so using molasses and maple syrup and making cakes and things. No, we never missed for anything in the war to speak of. Father was a manager of a cooperative store for numbers of years. And uh, the grain car would come in loaded with grain for the farmers. And all the grain bags would have these printed materials on them. And, and we'd save those and pick out the ones we wanted and beg father to buy that grain. And we'd ma mother made our dresses and everything. Isn't from that, that yeah. something? And nowadays, what the sewing mother did would be, well, it'd be expensive to have it handmade, but back then we thought a fancy dress was one you bought in the store. We didn't appreciate what she did at all. How did they do it? How did they just do that back then? Today, we're supposed to have all these gadgets that make life so much easier, oh. and yet nobody has any time to do anything. We but back then they did everything from scratch. They did, except she didn't make the cloth. She didn't do the, but Dell's grandmother, they they had sheep and they sent the wool off to be carded and so forth but they had the wool in balls and his grandmother was blind and she would knit she could knit uh, you know socks and things like that and mittens and all of, all those things even though she was blind she just needed a little help now and again to tell her where she was and so forth huh? amazing just amazing no we we my father was ill when I was really young, we were really poor. He had terrific migraines and he'd be in bed for days. And we had to tiptoe around. We couldn't make the, you know, slam the doors or anything like we usually did. Mother would tell us to be quiet, you know. And right. I can remember he'd throw up and throw up and he'd take the aspirin by the handful, oh, which boy. I knew wasn't good even back then, but right. he did. Yeah. Uh, oh, he had such headaches. Finally, as he got older, he got over that. Uh, I don't know. He ran in the family. He had a sister that had them, too. Something in the family, yeah. 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 Uh, mother and dad couldn't get married for years because mother was left uh, when her mother died of the flu, which would have been my grandmother. Why, her father was 
one of the first fatalities of, auto, of a new automobile. Oh. I don't know what happened exactly. I never do, did know, but mother would cry when you asked her about it. But, she, uh, but he was killed in an automobile accident. So she had four siblings, two younger brothers and two younger sisters, and she didn't feel she could get married until she saw them settled. So the two boys went in the woods. Uh, Willie was up in Eustis, up in Flagstaff. His place is all underwater now. And uh, Oiva was in the woods too, but eventually he came back and worked for a farmer and he did all this spraying of the apple trees and everything. And I guess that got to him because he died of cancer. Oh, gee. And, Boy. But the two girls, he, uh, mother got them settled in Massachusetts somehow. One, one girl, my Aunt Hilda, prednisone had just come out. And it made her feel so much better. They kept giving her bigger and larger and larger dosage. Yeah. And it, eventually she bled to death. Oh, from her stomach because they, it irritated, it, it ate away the inside of her stomach. They didn't know how dangerous prednisone was at that time. They thought it was a miracle drug. Yeah. Well, she did too because she was able to do so much more. Yeah. And uh, Aunt Helen married this man that was, uh, he had a very good job. I don't know what you'd call him exactly. Uh, machinist, I guess. Yeah. And they used to come and visit us every summer. They'd stay for a while. And I remember Aunt Helen would take about half an hour to get downstairs. They had to sleep upstairs. And the stairway was fairly steep. And she had arthritis. Both of them had severe arthritis. Yeah, yeah. So Uncle Ed took very good care of her until she passed away. Wow, wow. What a history. Uh, so didn't you, weren't you a writer also? Or? Well, I wrote, I wrote a column for the Advertiser Democrat, which is now owned by the Lewiston Sun. In Norway? In Norway. South I wrote Paris. one for several yeah. years. I wrote just news of, you know, just gossip, just news uh, of what was uh, going uh, on uh, around and so forth. Now, how did you know? How did you find out about what was going on in the area? Well, just just from talking with people and yeah, and seeing people, and I don't know. Some people would let me know, not very often, but once in a while they'd call me up and let me know, Betty, this this and this is happening. Would you like to know about it? And right, right. No, I I went. I graduated from high school, and I had some trouble finding a job. I worked for a photography studio in Portland. And I remember my handwriting was so good, they had, they had me write all the invitations to a for weddings oh. and everything. The people would have me write their invitations. Wow. I had very nice handwriting at that time. Now you can't read it. I yeah. can't make, Dell has to do all the checks and everything. But we, it, was, it was quite an experience. But after that, I didn't have anything to do. I lived with an aunt and uncle in Yarmouth, and I took the bus into Portland every day. And I used to love those olive sandwiches with olives in them. I'd go to this <laughs> sandwich shop and have lunch and get an olive sandwich for 10 cents every day. Wow. Uh, so what'd you do in Portland while you were going into the city every day? <laughs> Nothing much. I didn't do much. Looking for a job? or just Well, I, I worked at Franklin Grant Studios that, then, and then I came home after they didn't need me anymore. They Their business slows down in the winter and they didn't yeah. need me. Yeah. So I couldn't wait for them again in the spring. I had to find. So I had a cousin that was a high dental hygienist and she worked for a dentist who, who happened to be losing their assistant. So she recommended me and I went in and I was scared to death of dentists at that time. I know it was a terrible patient. Yeah. I still am. Well, uh, if, if I go to the dental office, you'd find my, uh, my I'm hanging on so tight. Clenching I'm to the pra Practically arm. leave my <laughs> handprints in the, but anyway, she got me a job and I, I worked there for, oh, many years. And I enjoyed it very much. And That's I, amazing to me that years ago, you didn't have to go to special schools or anything. No. You just knew somebody and they got you a job and it was on the job training, right? And that's right. But it was very, very rewarding and very nice. It wasn't terribly, I didn't get a big salary, but I got enough to right. 
I, I remember I was really proud. I saved a dollar a week, and I went to the bank every week and left a dollar yep. there. And yep. they were glad to have it. Oh, you of know? course, of course. And uh, I had a bit saved uh, that way. So, Betty, tell us about, did you have some, uh, do you have some hobbies or some some passions or interests oh, that you'd I, like us to know about? Or, I you like, know, I like you, to read, and I have belonged to several reading groups, but yeah. we don't seem to have one here now. Right. I wish we did. Yeah. I like to read a book and discuss it and so forth, and I, I do read a lot, as much as my eyes allow. Well, unfortunately, I have glaucoma at my age, but now I have an appointment with my eye doctor in a few days you know we might be able to get you online with an online book club there are people that do that online they they all read a book and then they all come together on on zoom oh, really? which is what we've learned this year is connecting with other people all over the world and they discuss the book well that would be nice yeah we'll have to look into that for you i i start, thought i was trying to start one here but i didn't feel capable of it. Yeah. Of course, I've been in the hospital twice, and I've been in two different nursing homes, and that did not agree with me at all. Before we, we wrap it up, is there anything you'd like your friends or family or neighbors here at Schooner to know about you? Well, I'm not very interesting in it exactly, <laughs> but I worked, at, I worked as a dental assistant for many, many years, and then when Dell went in this... Marine Corps, I moved to North Carolina to be with him, and I worked for a dentist down there. I came back and worked in Norway for the same dentist for a while. Then we moved to Auburn when he went to Central Maine Power Company, and yeah. I worked for the, a dentist in Auburn. He was the president of the Maine Dental Association, and I worked there until I finally decided to change careers, and I when CMVTI opened up, it's now Central Maine College or something, I went to see him. So we ran into a little trouble with Betty with our equipment, and we're going to finish up. Betty, you, you had said you went to CMVTI, and you, uh, you went to become a LPN, a nurse. That's right. And I went to, and I applied to work at the maternity ward at the hospital, but I was sent to the recovery room instead. And one day in the recovery room, they came to me and said that Dr. Mert Flanders didn't have anyone to help him with the, his tonsillectomies. So they sent me in and I learned on the job. And I could have taken out the tonsil and adenoids after six months working with him. I could have done it myself. Oh my goodness, on the job training to be a tonsillectomy nurse. That <laughs> right. is amazing. After that, they were short of help in the operating room, so they asked me to become a regular. And I worked with all the doctors and took call and was subject to being called in the middle of the night and so forth. We used to laugh because Dell was with the power company and if there was an accident he was called to fix the power lines and I was called to fix the people. <laughs> so you're, you'd both be called out if there was an accident took down a power line? Quite often. Now did you say you work here in Lawson? At I worked at Central Maine General Hospital. It was CMG then. Right, so you'd have to drive all the way in from Norway. Well no, we lived in Auburn at the time. Oh when, I see. When Dell started working for Central Maine Power Company we started living in Auburn. I see. And I, I couldn't see. live more than 10 minutes away from the... Uh, right. To be on call for emergency like that's that. That's right. Yeah. So, I, Betty, tell me, do you have any hobbies or interests or things that you like to do? I love to read, and I read everything, including the cereal boxes at breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I like, I always loved to go up to Kennebago with Dell, and we went, through, we kept a cottage up there for a week and we'd rent one and we'd uh, stay up there and we'd fish and I'd sit in the boat and read Oh when, boy. when the fish weren't biting. That must have been so nice. Oh, it was beautiful up there. And you were a writer too because you wrote for the for I wrote the paper. for the Advertiser Democrat. I wrote a column for several years. Yeah, yeah. Just local gossip, get people's names in the paper. Well, Betty, I'll tell you, this has been a wonderful interview. Despite the technical difficulties, we got it all in. And I would like to thank you for coming down and doing this. Piece of cake, right? Right. And I did want to say that in my youth, we didn't have any electricity or telephone. And I 
lived through my teen years without a telephone. I don't know how I did it, but <laughs> I, I loved to go to school because that was my social life. Sure. And well, you've seen a lot of innovation and a lot of uh, advances in your time. It certainly has been. Wonderful. It's, it's well, been quite a ride. <laughs> thank you very much again for coming down. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Scooter Morning Show. Remember to tune in every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 10.05.